Anadenanthera peregrina, Wikipedia article audio. Acacia angustiloba DC, Acacia microphylla wilt, Acacia peregrina wilt, Ingenia po wilt, Mimosa acacioides benth, Mimosa neapo poirit, Mimosa parvifolia poirit, Mimosa peregrina L, Neapa peregrina Britain and Rose, Piptidenia neapo spruce, Piptidenia peregrina benth. Anadenanthera peregrina, also known as Yapo, Yapo, Coaba, Parica, or Calcium tree, is a perennial tree of the Anadenanthera genus native to the Caribbean and South America. It grows up to 20 m tall, and has a horny bark. Its flowers are pale yellow to white and spherical. It is an entheogen which has been used in healing ceremonies and rituals for thousands of years in South America. It is also a source of dietary calcium. Related Species Botanical Varieties This plant is almost identical to that of a related tree, Anadenanthera colubrina, commonly known as Sibyl or Vilca. The beans of A. colubrina have a similar chemical makeup as Anadenanthera peregrina, with their primary constituent being buphotenin. The wood from A. peregrina is very hard and it is good for making furniture. It has a Janka rating of 3,700 pounds and a density of around 0.86 g/cm superscript 3. The beans and falling leaves are hallucinogenic and are toxic to cattle. Chemical compounds contained in A. peregrina include the bark contains a high percentage of tannins, 587 mg CE slash G extract. Uses Archaeological evidence shows anadenanthera beans have been used as hallucinogens for thousands of years. The oldest clear evidence of use comes from smoking pipes made of puma bone found with anadenanthera beans at Inca Cueva a site in the northwest of Humahuaca in the Puna border of Jujuy Province, Argentina. The pipes were found to contain the hallucinogen DMT, one of the compounds found in anadenanthera beans. Radiocarbon testing of the material gave a date of 2130 BC, suggesting that anadenanthera use as a hallucinogen is over 4,000 years old. Snuff trays and tubes similar to those commonly used for Yapo were found in the central Peruvian coast dating back to 1200 BC, suggesting that insufflation of anadenanthera beans is a more recent method of use. Archaeological evidence of insufflation use within the period 500-1000 AD, in northern Chile, has been reported. Some indigenous peoples of the Orinoco Basin in Colombia, Venezuela, and possibly in the southern part of the Brazilian Amazon make use of Yapo snuff for spiritual healing. Yapo snuff was also widely used in ceremonial contexts in the Caribbean area, including Puerto Rico and La Española, up to the Spanish conquest. Wood Yapo snuff is usually blown into the user's nostrils by another person through bamboo tubes or sometimes snuffed by the user using bird bone tubes. Blowing is more effective as this method allows more powder to enter the nose and is said to be less irritating. In some areas the unprocessed ground beans are snuffed or smoked producing a much weaker effect with stronger physical symptoms. Some tribes use Yapo along with Banisterio size copy to increase and prolong the visionary effects, creating an experience similar to that of ayahuasca. The first report of the effects of hallucinogenic snuff prepared from the beans of Anadenanthera peregrina dates back to 1496 when it was observed by Friar Ramon Payne, who was commissioned by Christopher Columbus among the Taina Indians of Hispaniola. 
Payne's report was first published in 1511 in Martyr's Descriptions of the New World. The description of its effects reads in part, This coaba powder, described as an intoxicating herb, is so strong that those who take it lose consciousness, when the stupefying action begins to wane, the arms and legs become loose and the head droops. It is administered with a cane about one foot long which they introduce one end of in the nose and the other in the powder and draw it into themselves through the nose. It worked quickly because, almost immediately they believe they see the room turn upside down and men walking with their heads downwards. The administering witch doctor took the drug along with his patients, intoxicating them so that they do not know what they do and speak of many things incoherently, believing that they are in communication with spirits. The beans have been found to contain up to 7.4% buphotenin. At up to 7.4% buphotenin, an effective 40 mg dose of insufflated buphotenin requires little more than 0.5 grams of beans. Toxicity the intraperitoneal LD50 of bufotenin is between 200-300 mg kg with death occurring by respiratory arrest. The LD50 in rodents scales to between 10,000 mg and 15,000 mg for a small 50 kg adult. Based on the intraperitoneal LD50 for rodents, at 74 mg per gram, it would require approximately 135 grams of beans to reach the estimated LD50 of bufotenin for a 50 kg adult. Human intravenous tests using bufotenin suggest the LD50 may be much lower in humans with subjects showing signs of peripheral toxicity at doses as little as 8 mg in some subjects. Free base bufotenin when insufflated, taken sublingually, orally, or intrarectally, elicits strong hallucinogenic effects with far less side effects. Chemical Compounds The effects of insufflated DMT and 5-MeO-DMT are relatively short-acting, the trip lasts about 10 minutes but can take an hour to get back to baseline, while the effects of insufflated YAPO typically last 2-3 hours. Of the three main compounds present, only insufflated bufotenin lasts 2-3 hours. Claims of anadenanthera peregrina containing DMT and 5-MeO-DMT as their main active ingredients are based on rare cases where these compounds are found in larger quantities than bufotenin. Typical acid base extraction techniques utilizing strong bases such as sodium hydroxide solution will exclude bufotenin from the extraction, in favor of DMT and 5-MeO-DMT. It is believed that such extractions have contributed to the misconception that bufotenin is a minor alkaloid in YAPO. The majority of the extractions confirm that bufotenin is primarily responsible for the effects of YAPO with the other compounds usually appearing in quantities too small to produce noticeable effects in an average YAPO dose of 5 to 10 grams. Entheogenic Uses The beans have been found to contain up to only 0.04% 5-MeO-DMT and 0.16% DMT. The leaves and bark also contain small amounts of DMT, 5-MeO-DMT, and related compounds. At up to 0.04% 5-MeO-DMT, an effective light 5 mg dose of insufflated 5-MeO-DMT would require over 12 grams of beans. It would be extremely difficult to insufflate such a quantity as tolerance would likely develop before the 12-gram nasal intake could be completed. Individual sensitivity to 5-MeO-DMT varies. It has been documented that the threshold dose in some individuals is as much as 10 mg insufflated requiring over 24 grams of beans for an effective dose of 5-MeO-DMT. 
traditional usage. At up to 0.16% DMT, an effective 40 mg dose of insufflated DMT would require 25 grams or more. Because of its volume, it's likely to be impossible to insufflate the 25 grams of beans required to reach the active dose of DMT present in the beans. An extract of 25 grams of beans could contain up to 1,850 mg of bufotenin, a potentially dangerous dose. With insufflated free base bufotenin, the maximum published safe dose used has been 100 mg. Unlike bufotenin, both DMT and 5-MeO-DMT are relatively unstable and begin to degrade rather quickly. Schultz and colleges examined a 120-year-old bean collection and found 0.6% bufotenin with no DMT or 5-MeO-DMT present at all. They also examined a batch of beans that contained all three compounds when fresh, but found only bufotenin in the beans after only two years of storage. When taken orally by some tribes in South America, Small amounts are often combined with alcoholic chichas, 29 moderate doses are unpleasant, producing nausea and vomiting. The beans were a main ingredient in Bilka Tori, an oral purge medicine used to induce ritual vomiting once a month. Large amounts are not usually consumed orally, as many tribes believe oral use is dangerous. Some South American tribes have been documented to use various bean preparations along with Banisteriosize copy, an herb containing Maui's. Typically Banisteriosize copy is chewed in the mouth while the anadenanthera beans are snuffed or smoked. Occasionally Banisteriosize copy is found mixed in with the snuff. Moderate amounts of banisteriosize copy will effectively double the potency of the anadenanthera beans. Larger amounts of banisteriosize copy will not only double the potency of anadenanthera beans but also alter the quality of the experience, producing a more relaxed dreamy effect, with possible increased nausea. There are no well-documented reports of the beans being used as a major component in ingestion of ayahuasca, a therapeutic tea made with banisteriosize copy. Effects Active constituents 2,9-dimethyltryptoline plant, 2-methyltryptoline plant, 5-meo-DMT bark, bean, 5-methoxy and methyltryptamine bark, Bufotenin plant beans, bufotenin, oxide fruit, beans, catechol plant, leucoanthocyanin plant, leucopelargonidol plant, DMT fruit, beans, pods, bark, DMT, oxide fruit, methyltryptamine bark, orientin leaf, saponarantin leaf, vitrine leaf. Bufotenin Dimethyltryptamine and 5-MeO-DMT Oral Usage Use with Maui's